Young Chuck is dreaming of getting those high US salaries. He's stuck at his job making $20,000 a year as a software engineer. He can barely afford anything. He lives in a small apartment. He cannot start a family because he doesn't have enough money. He keeps hearing that all the money is in tech, that there are people making $100,000, $200,000 a year, but he thinks it's impossible. There is no way he can get that. It's just a dream. The last cut bender is different. He makes his dream into a reality. Like young Chuck, he grew up in a small city. He was broke and he dreamed of a better life. But instead of seeing it's impossible, he made a plan and relentlessly went after it until he built the lifestyle that he wanted. Young and Benders, my name is Zorbek and in this video I'll show you how you can move to the US from abroad and find a six-figure job as a software engineer. How do I know this? Well, this is exactly what I did. I moved to the US when I was 21 years old. I've been already six years here. I first did a master's degree at UCLA, then I found a job as a software engineer in LA. Then I moved to New York and I found the job this time as a senior software engineer. In this video, I'm gonna structure it and give you a step-by-step -step plan. First, we're gonna find what is the best path to take to get a ticket to the US based on your situation. Then we're gonna make a step by step plan on how to actually make it happen and then we're gonna see how you can get a six-figure job from there once you're inside of the US. I'm grouping you guys into three different categories. There are the students, there are the young grads, people who just graduated and you have a few years of experience and then you have workers who have multiple year years of experience. Based on it you will see which is the best type of visa for you to get. You first have the F1 visa so that's the visa you get once you get accepted in a US college they're gonna sponsor you to get a student visa. You can think about it as like a, I don't know, like a guest star appearance on a TV show. You're supposed to be here just for a short amount of time but if you make a good appearance if people like you and uh, you make a good job you're going to be invited for a more permanent role that's what the student visa is you're not supposed to stay for much but if you do a good job you can actually extend your stay so that's mostly for students other people can also do it i'm going to cover it like there's some tactics but it's mostly geared towards students then you have the h1b h1b is designed for skilled workers so it's people who have multiple years of experience and they can join a company at like at the mid-level software engineer or like a senior level software engineer so usually there's going to be like for young grads people who have multiple years experience like workers and the last one is the green card the green card is actually the best out of all of them because if you have it you have at least 10 years that are guaranteed and then you can extend it for more than that and also you have a direct path towards citizenship because the green card is you're literally basically like a citizen of the country of all the all the advantages for this one the problem though is that it's a complete lottery people from all over the world apply there's like quotas among every country and the only thing you do is you can apply and you can pray for it that's all now i'm going to tell you what is the best path to take from my experience from my six years in the us talking to lawyers having seen countless of different people trying to come the best way is you get the f1 visa first the student visa and I know some of you who are not students, I'm going to cover this, like I'm, I'm going to tell you a little hack. Then you get the OPT, the OPT is like a work permit that you get if you're a student, so it's very specific to the student visa. And then after this, once you're inside of a company, you ask them to sponsor your H1B. That's like that skilled worker visa. And this will allow you to stay at least six years or up to maybe 10 years at the time in the US. This is a significant amount of time. But while you do all of this, the hack is you're going to be applying to your green card every year. So you'll have like in parallel, you're going to be doing two different things. The green card is like a long term play. F1, OPT, H1B is like a sh more of a short term play. So you're going to do all those things. This way you really maximize your, your chances. So number one is something that you can do literally straight up from your home. You don't have to be in the US. Straight up from your home in October, apply to a green card lottery visa. Just write like US green card lottery visa in Google. And then you're going to find the website and you apply. It takes 10 minutes. You don't need to pay anyone. Like if someone asks you money, don't do it through an agency. Do it through the official United States website for the the green card diversity visa you do it it's every october it takes 10 minutes to apply you just need to fill out like a short form upload a picture upload your passport and that's it. it's free it doesn't take much time it's only if you get accepted that then it kicks towards the whole process and then you need to go to the embassy and do like a couple of things to just apply for the lottery and to be selected you can do it from home it's not complicated you should literally start doing it now the next thing is what you're going to do in parallel this one is requires actually a significant amount of effort that's to get the student visa for some of you guys who don't want to be students again don't worry about it. You don't have to do a full degree all over again. What you can do is what's called a master's of engineering. It's only one year, literally one year of your time. And this, the advantage is going to actually increase your salary because it's designed specifically for people who have some years of experience and they want to just study for a year and they want to go back to the industry after that. It very, it's a very like specific type of a degree. For this, you can literally do it in a year and you, during half of that amount of time, you can also work like part-time for a company. So it's very advantageous. And also you're going to get like this experience of being in the US. For other people who want to like actually 
study what I recommend is doing a master's of science. So that's a massive, it lasts usually like a year and a half up to two years. This one, again, like this is just gonna boost your resume, give you another advantage compared to people who don't have that and it's gonna increase your salary. So it's worth doing and you get like that entrance ticket to the US. So first step is you're gonna look into a list of universities and gonna check the requirements that they have. Then you need to find a scholarship because you're gonna realize very quickly that most likely you cannot afford it. It's way too expensive. Or if you can afford it, it's like ridiculous to spend like, I don't know, depending on where you go, but to spend like 40K or 50K or something like that per year for that degree, <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. And I want you guys to go in debt for that. So don't take any loans find scholarships, find scholarships that can cover most of it. I got a scholarship from an organization called the BAEF. It's a Belgian organization because I was in Belgium. So like I found locally in my country for you, try to find a local scholarship in your country. That's the best. You can also apply for international scholarships. There is an organization called Fulbright, but they don't cover 100% of your tuition. So you need to, it's, it's a very good help, but it doesn't cover 100%. So you need to take into account like those things and also check the requirements because some of the scholarship, they have harsh requirements. Like they say, you can only study you're in the US then you have to come back to your home country or that you have to do a bunch of different things for them. Ideally, read the requirements and make sure that you're fine with whatever they ask you. For me, I was lucky because they didn't ask me anything. They literally just, it was like a charity organization. They gave me the scholarship and then they, they sent me and they, there was no strings attached. So ideally, if you get one like this, it's perfect. The next step is you need to pass a few exams. Universities, they require you to pass English tests to evaluate your level, to make sure that you actually know how to speak English and that you can be able to study there. There are two exams to do. There is either the TOEFL and the IELTS, so that's a purely English exam. And then there's the GRE. GRE is English exam, plus there's some math, like logic to it. Those exams, honestly, bro, even native English speakers, they wouldn't do well because it's it's so, like, I honestly hate them. They're very specific. They need, like, a strategy. They're, a lot of exercises are completely unnatural and, frankly, really stupid. But that's the way it is. Like, you have to do it. I would recommend for, like, the TOEFL, maybe depending on your level of English, like, one or two weeks of prep. Try to do it just as well as you can because the scores, they have a very heavy weight on your applications because those universities, they don't care about your grades. They, they want to know, like, in which percentile you were in your class. So, like, if you say, oh, I was in the top 5% of my class or top 3%, that's very good. That's ranked, like, very well in the applications. But what's even more heavy than this is, like, what were your grades at those tests? Because then it's standard test that everyone in the world takes. They take the same tests. So they can compare like, oh, this student from this country versus this student from this other country. Like who is better? Well, we're going to just look at the standard test and we can figure out this way. So just give it your all. Try to get the highest score that you possibly can for both of those tests. Either TOEFL or IELTS, they're equivalent. You can do pick either one of them. And then the GRE, oh, you'll have to take this one. The next thing that you need after you've secured those tests is you need reference letters from professors or from your employers. You need roughly three of them. It's like two or three depends on, on the universities. You ask those letters and those letters is basically letters where those professors or those employers they talk about you and they talk about you in a positive light they say oh like i worked with this student he made an amazing job he did this project and he had like the one of the best grades in the class or like whatever it is that they want to say they just need to say something good about you and ideally something that will stand out and help boost your your profile so for that you need to develop a good relationship with your professors or with your employer because you're not going to just come if they don't know about you they they have no idea who you are it's not going to be a good letter that they're going to write for you they're going to be super generic so ideally you build a relationship you do like i don't know like an internship with them or if it's like your employer you try to really like to stand out and build a relationship in some way and you're gonna want to plan the seed in advance so think multiple months at least in advance maybe six months in advance or something like that because then you're going to maximize the quality of the letters that they're going to write for you and the very last step here is you write your personal statements a personal statement is basically just a letter where you explain why do you want to apply for that university and why do you want to apply for that field of study for example like if you want to go to mit to study computer science don't just say something stupid like oh i want to go to mit because it's a great university and like it's very prestigious and i want to study computer science because it provides a lot of opportunities in the job market or something like that something super generic that makes you the same as a million of other people you don't want to say this what you want to do is you want to be extremely specific you want to say i want to study computer science because i am interested in using ai technology to revolutionize the education field the education industry and i want to create like a more personalized experience to provide provide more opportunities for everyone and help tap into the human potential. And the reason why I want to go to MIT is because you have this very specific track geared towards AI and education and you're blending this and you're the frontier of the development of this and based on the research that professor like X is doing. You're like super specific, hyper targeted. And then when they read this, they're like, dang, like this guy, okay, like he's not just like a random average student. He knows exactly what he wants. He's super targeted. It makes sense. It provides a lot of value. And if we have a student like this who comes in into our university and then he goes on to build 
build incredible things. That's a good boost. That's a good image for our university. So we would want to hire that student. Want to want him to be part of our university. So this is what you want to do. You want to always think about this. Once you have prepared all those things, you apply to the universities. Apply to as many as you can, and that is like realistic. So like I applied to eight universities when I was applying. I think something around that, like around ten to fifteen, maybe maximum, uh, is is a good number. Once you have done that process. Hopefully, if you have your ticket to the US, you're here already, it's time to find a six-figure job. And here you want to be strategic because a little warning, for you to find a job is going to be a lot tougher than for a US citizen to find a job. That's just the reality. You're going to be playing the game in hard mode while they're going to be playing the game in normal mode. That's just the way it is. And it makes sense, right? If you think from an employer perspective, they're going to be like, why would we want to hire a foreigner who has a visa? It, he's not stable. He might be kicked out of the country in a few years or like in a year or two. Like, why do we want to deal with all this paperwork when we can just hire a local citizen and we, we won't need to deal with that? And especially like also the cultural shock, like we don't know if he speaks English well. Like, we don't want to deal with all those things. That's the employer perspective. And it makes sense, right? But they can make an exception to this if the student is super talented if they see that this guy he has a very unique experience he stands out because he has very unique projects or like whatever it is that you have that stands out then it can be a reason for them to be like okay actually would really benefit from having this guy in our company and that's how you can get in so i'm going to explain how you can stand out but first you need to go through the basics and that's what everyone needs to do even if you're a u.s citizen you need to do this this is the basics you need to build a good resume like you have a good portfolio of projects then you apply to a ton of jobs at least 100 and then you network on linkedin on twitter like whatever it is but you try to network this the basics that everyone needs to do. If you don't do those things, I, I don't know what you hope to get. This is the basics. But then you need to add an additional step. You need to figure out how can you stand out from the crowd. This is extremely important in especially the age that we're in right now. And especially if you are entering a new market and you're at a disadvantage compared to other people, you need to stand out. So the first thing that I'm going to tell you is you need to use your local advantage. If you did all this work to get into the US and then you're just using that to apply online and do what everyone else is doing, this is, bro, this is stupid. Like you're not using the advantage that you have of being physically located there and one of the advantages is if you follow the strategy that i give you and you're an f1 student you're gonna be on a campus and campuses have career fairs and those career fairs have like basically it's like an event where like a hundred or so companies come they rent like a big hall on the campus and then it's like it lasts for multiple days usually and these companies have like a table and you can come you can talk to them you can talk to the engineers or the recruiters i really recommend you going there and not just go there plan very strategically get a list of all the companies that will be there in advance like multiple days or even weeks prior go get that list target specific companies that you want to talk to because you're not going to be able to talk to everybody you need to talk to very specific targeted companies do research on them try to get them to remember you somehow get the contacts of that that recruiter who is there or that like engineer manager or like senior engineer like whoever it is try to get their contacts when you get back home dm them like reach out to them on linkedin and add a little note when you send the connection just that like a little note to be like hey like we talked today in the career fair at like this university and just wanted to connect and maybe ask like a few more questions and they say like i promise it's going to be very quick and build those connections early the other thing you want to do is you want to network in person so career fairs is, is nice but that's very specific right it's like a few times a year it's not that often you can network all the time in person by going to different types of events on campus but also by literally dming people on linkedin connecting with people dming people on twitter and try to like talk a little bit online and then try to invite them for a coffee or something like this try to make it super convenient for them or like a lunch or a dinner you pay you invite them and you try to make it interesting so that there is value for them to go but at the same time you get a lot of value by being in contact with them and that might open opportunities that if either they will invite you for an interview at their company or they're going to recommend you to another company unlimited opportunities that can be created that you cannot even imagine the opportunities that can be created by just talking to people and the next thing that i really recommend you is you want to start early and plant seeds as soon as possible ideally as soon as you land in the us you're going to already start talking to people dming people on linkedin and applying for jobs and i would even go more hardcore than this given the state of the market i would start applying even before i step foot on the us i would change my resume i would add the location already to be in the us to be that city where you're going i would add in the education that university where I'm going. I would also update my LinkedIn to add the same things, update the location, update the university. And I'll start DMing people. I'll start applying for like jobs or internships just so that you can get in as early as possible. And you play a long-term game, right? Like if you're thinking of getting an internship or job that's like six months or a year, if you already start talking to people now, you're planting good seeds and you're building those relationships. If 
you don't do it and you're like okay dang in two weeks i need to find a job and you start applying actively then you start dming people and try to network like that's not gonna work well because people are gonna feel that it's not genuine you're reaching out because you want to get something from me and like and it's super accelerated discussion that's not gonna work well like, some people are gonna reply still some people are gonna help you but the the effectiveness of that method is gonna be lowered by a lot so what you want to do is you want to play a long-term game plan the seeds in advance and make it seem very genuine no, not just make it seem genuine like actually be genuine and then that's going to be a lot more effective and that's going to be a super powerful way of standing out compared to all sorts of other people who are in the same situation as you are this i try to give you guys like an overview of a very simplified strategy so that actually takes steps right it's like an actionable strategy that you can start implementing now i hope this was useful for you i go a lot more in depth in my private network i have like this network of exclusive code vendors we have like those group calls and then i teach you like how to build apps to build like a portfolio of ai projects to stand out in the market how to utilize different strategies strategies to network and to like grow as a software engineer make more money build cool stuff so if you're interested go to lastcodebender.com slash bootcamp and join i highly recommend you but otherwise if you want to get more details on how to find a job you can check out this video right here